Hello YouTube. This is going to be the first in my videos on the specific methods of execution practiced in the United States. Um, part of a long series, I expect, of uh, videos that will deal with the death penalty and uh, the reasons why I don't think we should be pursuing it. I'm going to start with a little history, uh, beginning with a definition. Hanging. The term hanging has been used historically to include crucifixion and impalement because the victim was left hanging uh, after death. But in modern times, hanging generally refers to the method of execution whereby the victim, and I will use that term throughout this series, dies by suffocation due to suspension by a ligature. There's been much controversy in the United States over methods of execution and whether they constitute cruel and unusual punishment. The concept of cruel and unusual goes back to 1689 and the English Bill of Rights signed by William III and his Queen Mary II. But just as in the U.S. Constitution, the definition of cruel and unusual was left to individual cases and to tradition. The Eighth Amendment to the United States Constitution says, quote, excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual in punishments inflicted, end quote. There are to this day court cases over what constitutes cruel punishment, though there are those who believe punishment for capital crimes should be painful and terrifying. To me, a fair definition of cruel. The death penalty in all its forms may be said to be cruel, though in no way unusual. Perhaps that is why the Founding Fathers used the language cruel and unusual. If the language had been cruel or unusual, the death penalty would have died, uh, it would have had to end when the Constitution was ratified. It is obvious that executing prisoners is not unusual but it should be just as obvious that it is cruel. The language of the Eighth Amendment allows it to be one or the other, but not both. A hanging, if it's done correctly, breaks or dislocates a bone in the neck called the axis. The weight of the body is supposed to dislocate this bone, causing either damage or to or severing of the spinal cord. If the cord is severed, spinal shock occurs and death is more or less instantaneous, as if a power switch had been turned off. If not, the rope does two other things. It shuts off the blood flow through the carotid arteries and it stops the breathing. In this case, death is not instantaneous, nor anywhere close to it. While it is assumed that unconsciousness happens fairly quickly, and quickly may be a relative term when you're strangling, it can take up to 30 minutes for the heart to stop. As long as the victim is conscious, pain will be excruciating. In modern times, a table has been used to calculate how long the drop should be from the scaffold to accomplish separation of the axis bone without decapitating the victim. A table in use in the 1890s, for example, called for a person weighing 135 pounds to be dropped 6 feet 2 inches. A revised table from 1913 makes it 7 feet 5 inches. There are many other variables that are not included in the table. One of those is the musculature of the neck. A person with a large and muscular neck may not experience the severing of the spinal cord and may therefore slowly strangle in great pain. Today, the only two jurisdictions in the English-speaking world that impose state-sponsored hangings are Washington State and South Africa. The state of Montana did use hanging, but uh, has gone exclusively to the use of lethal, lethal injection since 2007. This will be all for the hanging video. Next up, the electric chair. Zap.